From its beginnings here at the Royal Palace of Versailles in 1789, the French Revolution had been very different from the American Revolution. Whereas the Americans basically fought one big war to win colonial independence and eventually create a democracy, French revolutionaries fought against internal and external foes who wanted to protect the French monarchy. The French Revolution involved changing the structure of the national government several times, but in the end, a successful democratic government did not arise. During the first three years of the French Revolution, the period when the National Assembly ruled France, many important legal changes were enacted to benefit ordinary citizens. Up to this point, although the king's role as a leader had been severely restricted, the success of the revolutionary government still very much depended on receiving his cooperation. And even though there had been some very serious outbreaks of violence during this stage of the revolution, only a small number of deaths had occurred. But the relative peacefulness that existed in France in the autumn of 1791 was about to be shattered as the newly elected Legislative Assembly the second government of the French Revolution, prepared to take over. At the same time, the people of the United States were in the process of approving the first ten amendments to the Constitution, known as the Bill of Rights. While further west, Spain was busy colonizing California by building a long chain of missions near the Pacific coast. When the Legislative Assembly took charge of the government of France on October 1st, 1791, it faced three serious challenges. First, the severe economic troubles that had helped cause the French Revolution in the first place still persisted, and they were inflicting many hardships on the French people. Second, French Catholics, upset that the revolutionary government was trying to suppress their religion, strongly opposed the rule of the Legislative Assembly. Just one example of such anti-Catholicism occurred when revolutionaries closed down the Paris church that was once housed in this building, so it could be converted into a tomb for the great heroes of the revolution. And to add insult to injury, the government had changed the Catholic name of the church to a pagan name, the Pantheon, which was a temple to all the gods in the days of ancient Rome. The third serious problem for the Legislative Assembly came from the King of France himself. He had been secretly trying to obtain military support from other monarchs to destroy the revolutionary government, warning them that if France's revolution were not stopped, it might spread across the continent and threaten their kingdoms as well. In the spring of 1792, all across France, there were many large areas where people were still actively resisting the French Revolution. And by then, most of the moderate revolutionaries in the Legislative Assembly had been replaced by radicals who wished to eliminate those opposed to their rule. Also that spring, a newly invented killing machine for chopping off the heads of wrongdoers, called the guillotine, was used in a public execution for the first time. It was becoming clear to the government that King Louis's efforts at finding military support were succeeding, and that a serious threat to the French Revolution was brewing to the east in the powerful kingdoms of Austria and Prussia. The revolutionaries declared war on them and by July, foreign troops were poised to invade France. Angry revolutionaries blamed the impending invasion on the king, and early that August, his royal palace in Paris, that once overlooked these beautiful gardens, was attacked. The king and his family were hauled off to prison. 600 palace guards were massacred, and the king's remaining royal powers were suspended. 
Soon the guillotine was put to work again. This time, mass executions of people accused of being enemies of the revolution were carried out in various public squares in Paris. The violence continued on into the next month, and during what are called the September Massacres, 1,200 prisoners, many of them members of the clergy, were cruelly butchered by the revolutionaries while still in their cells. That same September, the French army won a glorious victory by soundly defeating the invading Prussians at the Battle of Valmy in eastern France. This was a tremendous defeat for supporters of the monarchy because a third revolutionary government called the National Convention was immediately established. The convention abolished the monarchy and proclaimed the birth of France's first republic. A republic being a nation run by the elected representatives of the people. The leaders of the first republic vowed to eliminate other monarchies as well and to sum up their vision for the French people, the motto, Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité, meaning liberty, equality, brotherhood, was adopted. Early in 1793, a criminal court found the king guilty of plotting against the government and sentenced him to death. On January 21st of that year, this busy Paris square was filled with people. They were hoping to catch a final glimpse of the king before he died on the guillotine, which on that day had been set up right about here. After the execution was over, cheers filled the air as the king's severed head was shown to the enthusiastic crowd. But the king's execution had quite the opposite effect on the rulers of the kingdoms of Spain, Great Britain, and Holland because it caused them to join with Austria and Prussia in the war against France. And despite pleas for help from its old ally, France, President Washington decided that the United States would not get involved in the rapidly escalating European war. By the spring of 1793, foreign troops were invading France from several directions while at the same time, large numbers of French citizens were speaking out against the French Revolution. Important revolutionary leaders, such as Georges-Jacques Danton, helped pass emergency measures to stop those opposed to the government. One of the most extreme measures was to create special courts of law, known as revolutionary tribunals, whose sole purpose was to try those accused of counter-revolutionary activities. Interestingly, some of the first people convicted by the new tribunals were sent to this walled town that had been turned into a prison due to the fact that the nation's other prisons were so overcrowded. In May of 1793, the first batch of 700 prisoners arrived here, and more than half of them were women. Later on, 245 priests were imprisoned in the town for refusing to support the civil constitution for the clergy. This was the law that had placed the Catholic Church under government control. By the summer of 1793, a special committee for public safety had been operating for several months as part of the National Convention, and it actually ruled France. Members of the committee belonged to a Paris political group called the Jacobin Club that was well known for its radical ways. Their group was headed by a controversial figure named Maximilien Robespierre, a man respected for being impossible to corrupt, but who often acted like a dictator. The Committee for Public Safety organized a reign of terror against anyone who publicly disagreed with official government policies. During the Reign of Terror, this prison in Paris, called the Conciergerie, held many well-known political prisoners. The most famous prisoner was the king's wife, Queen Marie Antoinette, a woman despised for her arrogant and extravagant ways. In October of 1793, a revolutionary tribunal sentenced the queen to death. This was not a surprising verdict, because during the terror, as it was called, nine out of ten people tried by the tribunals were found guilty. 
before being beheaded. Prisoners at the conciergerie were escorted to this cell in order to have their hair cut so that it would not interfere with the guillotine's blade. Then the prisoners were loaded into carts like this one and hauled through the streets to wherever the guillotine had been set up for the day's public executions. Amazingly, it is estimated that the revolutionary tribunals sentenced 18,000 people to death during the Reign of Terror. Oddly enough, the era of the Reign of Terror, also known as the Jacobin Dictatorship, was a time when many important democratic changes were instituted in France. However, after the invasions of France were successfully halted by the French army, many of these reforms were reversed when a new group of politicians gained power in the summer of 1794. And by then, the main leaders of the Jacobin dictatorship had been put to death for treason. In October of 1795, a young military officer with a great thirst for power named Napoleon Bonaparte put down an uprising by royalists. After the uprising had been quelled, a fourth revolutionary government called the Directory was formed and they set up their operations here at the Luxembourg Palace in Paris. After the Directory took over, Napoleon grew to be a very popular hero in France due to his brilliant military victories in Italy. In 1797, the Directory even asked him to take charge of an invasion of Great Britain. But Napoleon did not like the government's plan. Instead, he convinced the Directory to approve an invasion of Egypt his goal was to disrupt vital British trade in the Middle East and then establish a French colony. It is interesting to note that Napoleon brought scholars along with him when he invaded Egypt. And back in France, their discoveries caused a tremendous fascination for the ancient Egyptian civilization to develop. In the end, Napoleon's plan for Egypt failed. Nevertheless, he remained a strong and respected leader in the eyes of the French people. And as the dawn of the 19th century approached, the French people wanted a strong leader more than a poorly functioning democracy. And in November of 1799, with the help of certain influential politicians, Napoleon brought about an end to the French Revolution by seizing control of the government of France. Napoleon's rise to power had extremely important consequences for the people of the United States, and it makes an interesting postscript to the story of the French Revolution. Because only one year after taking over, Napoleon forced Spain to return the Louisiana Territory to France. This was the land west of the Mississippi River that France had ceded to the Spanish after the French and Indian War. Then, in 1803, in order to finance his war efforts in Europe, Napoleon turned around and sold the entire territory to the United States. And thanks to this sale, called the Louisiana Purchase, the size of the United States was doubled for a mere $15 million. True or false? Most members of the Jacobin Club supported the reign of terror. True or false, King Louis XVI was executed shortly after France's first republic was declared. True or false, the Committee for Public Safety worked to end excessive use of the guillotine. True or false, President Washington decided to help France in its wars with other European nations. True or false, the French Revolution ended when Napoleon seized power.